I'm not a tad guy, so I don't think I'm going to ever get a tad. I think that passed me by, so I'm pretty comfortable being tattoo free. Uh, that's a question my wife asks me all the time, and I don't think I've come up with an answer yet. I'm, I think with my age, I'm heading toward the senior PGA Tour. That's my goal, is to be on the Champions Tour. Uh, I go bother people. I walk around campus and just make sure they don't get their work done either. In classes, I sometimes have to represent all men. And so in some communication classes I teach, I have to talk from the male perspective and I'm not sure that I'm the best representation of masculinity in all cases. So it's hard to always talk about, well, men do this and men do that, when in reality I may do something completely different. Mainly dead ones. Um, because I think they're the last group of politicians that have been honorable and, and truthful. Um, I'm a big fan of Thomas Jefferson, for example, who just celebrated his 266th birthday last week. There are dirty people in it, but 99% of all the people involved in politics are hardworking people who care about citizens. So I think sometimes politicians do get a bad rap. He calls me on a regular basis. Um, the biggest challenge is just living up to expectations. I mean, he was elected with the highest expectations of anybody since John Kennedy. And for anyone to be able to achieve those expectations would be very unrealistic. I'm really darn good at being a statistician on the bench. I mean, I warm the bench like nobody's business. In actuality, one of the things I do at Peace College, I'm an announcer for the women's basketball team, and I'm not going to kick Jim Nance out of his chair in the next few days or next few months, but I, but I hold my own there. I'm pretty much a full-time dad when I'm not at Peace College. I have a five-year-old, and so I spend a lot of time with her and my wife, and we do a lot of things. I mean, I try to introduce my daughter to the things I enjoyed when I was small, sports, fine arts, history. So I really enjoy that. It gives me an opportunity to relive my childhood. Man, you have the dirtiest office I think I've ever seen. As a kid growing up, my parents liked me to read, and so I read about sports when I was six, seven, eight years old. So I had a lot of sports figures that were my childhood heroes. I mean, back to Joe DiMaggio, that was probably my first one because I read a lot of books about the old Yankee teams, and, and then I started reading about people like Sammy Baugh and some people that, you know, the generation growing up today wouldn't even identify with. but. I started reading about sports figures and, and how they not only achieved in the sports world, but were successful outside the sports world. And so I'm trying to teach my students a little bit about that too. I have to say Bugs Bunny. Just couldn't, I mean, that's such a traditional classic cartoon and, you know, how Bugs Bunny could get out of some of the situations that Elmer Fudd tried to put him into and they could never catch that rascally rabbit. And I just thought, boy, if I could be a cartoon character and get out of any situation, I'd be like Bugs. I'm sure it was something very mundane and boring, like buying groceries. I don't think I have any exciting story. The last time I had any fun drawing, withdrawing money from the ATM machine, I was in Vegas, and I won't even go there. I'm probably the person who has been the most disciplined person to ever go to Vegas. My wife and I went out there last year for the first time. We set a budget, and hold on to your hats, $30 to gamble. We took $30, we came back with $30. We spent more money tipping taxi cab drivers than we spent gambling, but we had a fantastic time.